Yes. The Lord be with you. Que el Señor sea con ustedes. Absolutely beautiful time of day to worship. I'm glad that you decided to join us this morning. Esto es un día hermoso y una hora hermosa para venir a adorar al Señor. Y yo estoy muy contento que ustedes hayan decidido hacerlo. We're going to begin with a prayer if you will rise and bow your heads. Vamos a comenzar con una oración si se levantan y por favor inclinan sus cabezas. Let's pray. Vamos a orar. Father, we give thanks for this beautiful day. Padre, te damos gracias por este día hermoso. We are thankful to be together in worship of you. Te damos gracias que estamos juntos adorándote. We ask that you would pour your Holy Spirit out on us. Te pedimos que derrames tu Espíritu Santo en nosotros. As we sing your praises, petition your power, and read your word. Así como damos nuestras peticiones, predicamos tu palabra. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. En nombre de Cristo Jesús, amen. We're going to listen to our first of uh, three songs now and uh, feel free to sing and join along. Vamos a alabar al Señor. Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Praise God. So, how beautiful is God? His words, His love, everything about Him is beautiful, amen? And the fact that He saved us when our lives were just ready to to go to death, you know, Jesus really brought us hope again through his sacrifice. And so, in this song, it's called Te doy Gloria. But in English, it means to give God the glory, amen? And that's what we're here, that's what we're created for, to bring God glory to his name, amen, and to his kingdom, yes? So let's begin to worship God this morning.
con una corona de espinos te hiciste rey por siempre con una corona de espinos te hiciste rey por siempre con una corona de espinos te hiciste rey por siempre con una corona de espinos te hiciste rey por siempre con una corona de espinos te hiciste rey por siempre con una corona de espinos te hiciste rey por siempre y te doy gloria gloria te doy Jesús, una vez más te damos gloria, Señor, te doy gloria, gloria, te doy gloria, gloria, te doy gloria, gloria, a ti Jesús, amén. Please be seated. Pueden tomar asiento. So we will uh, have the sermon early because then we have the turnaround to get into the sanctuary to record the sermon at nine o'clock. Así es de que vamos a hacer el sermón más pronto porque después tengo que ir adentro al santuario para el siguiente servicio. The nice thing about having the sermon translated in real time is that you have an opportunity to let the words soak in while the other language is being spoken. Y la belleza de que sea traducido es que ustedes tienen la oportunidad de en su propio lenguaje poder, pues, pudiéramos decir como discernir un poquito más lo que se está hablando. It also provides the opportunity to fade away and start thinking about what you're going to have for lunch or about the weather. Resist that urge. Y por favor, también resistan la tentación de estar pensando qué voy a hacer, qué voy a comer, a dónde voy a ir a, 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 a lunch. So the, the phrase I use uh, is get your mind right. Así es de que la frase que yo uso es que usted ponga su mente la dirección. Are we ready? Estamos listos. Okay, so this is the second in our relationship series. Este es el segundo sermón en la, de, en la serie de relaciones. And today we're going to talk about a, a very specific part of the way we relate to one another. Y hoy vamos a hablar de la manera específica en que nosotros nos relacionamos unos a otros. To start off, I want you to think about some people in your life. Para empezar, yo quiero que ustedes piensen algunas personas en su vida. Uh, it might even be yourself. Puede ser usted mismo. Oh, is she on? Can you, can you hear Corazon okay? Yeah, yeah, John, you can? Okay, good. All right, so uh, here's the scenario. Aquí está el escenario. We know people who do things that are, uh, can you hear her or no? Okay, we all know people who do things that are unhealthy over and over again. For example, we know people who drink to the point that they lose their driver's license, they lose their job, they cause trouble in their family, and we wonder, why would you keep drinking? But they do. que toman hasta cierto punto de perder su licencia, de perder su familia, y nosotros nos preguntamos, ¿por qué siguen tomando? 
In the same way, we know people who go from one bad relationship where they are treated poorly to another and to another and to another and until we say to ourselves, why would they continue to seek out someone that is harmful to them? There are many scenarios, uh, those are, are two kind of dramatic ones, but I'm also talking about people who bury themselves in uh, their cell phones or their computers a, a, to the point where they lose their relationship with their family and, and even with their friends. They exist only online. They really don't have much to do with other uh, people in the flesh. Y también nos preguntamos personas que están sumergidas en el teléfono, en la tableta, en la computadora y no están sociabilizando con personas en tiempo real. Toda la relación que tienen es electrónica, digital. Most of the time when we see people like that or, or even if we are the ones engaged in those kind of behaviors, what, what we think is uh, there's something wrong with them. They're, they're just bad or, or, or they... Uh, there's something broken or they would stop doing that. Mm. So today we'll explore what actually causes repetitive toxic behavior in human beings. Y por qué los seres humanos lo siguen haciendo una y otra vez. And we do that as a part of the relationship series because to understand that and be able to work in a positive way in those situations is very important for our relationships. Y lo vamos a hacer para poder entender que esto es básico para nuestras relaciones. Es muy importante. We're going to take a, a look at a, <clears throat> at a scripture in which Jesus is talking to a person who is living in the way we've talked about. She is known as the woman at the well. That way we're not sharing coronavirus. I'm going to read the scripture in English and then I'll turn it over to Corazon to read in Spanish. Uh, again, you are likely familiar with it. I'm going to start midway through the uh, uh, sixth verse. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well and it was about noon. <clears throat> a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews don't share things in common with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and this well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give uh, became in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here in order to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and then come back. The woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You're right in saying that you have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. So what you have said is true. And the woman said to him, Well, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation comes from the Jews. 
But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came and they were astonished that he would be speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? And then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, you must come and see, a man has told me everything that I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? And they left the city and were on their way to him. El pastor acaba de leer el pasaje de la mujer samaritana, donde Jesús pasa por Samaria, encuentra a la mujer samaritana y tienen una conversación. Jesús le dice que le dé agua de beber y ella le dice que por qué, por qué le pide a ella que es mujer y además samaritana. Ellos están en esta conversación y la mujer le dice, dame del agua para que yo no tenga sed jamás. Y él le dice, si tú supieras quién te pide, quién te está pidiendo de beber, tú me pedirías a mí. Después Jesús le dice, ve y llama a tu marido. Y la mujer le dice, yo no tengo marido. Y le dice el Señor, sí, porque cinco maridos has tenido y el que ahora tienes no es tu marido. Entonces ella le dice, yo reconozco que tú eres profeta. Y el Señor le dice, él se revela a ella Entonces los discípulos vienen y le dicen a Jesús ¿Por qué estás hablando con una mujer? Y Jesús les dice que las buenas nuevas son para todos Y después la mujer fue y llevó la palabra de Jesús A toda su comunidad, a toda su aldea This woman in her... Uh, in the place that she lived would have wreaked havoc over and over. Esta mujer pudo haber tenido tan, tantas problemas allí en donde ella vivía. If you were a woman in a, in a village in that day and age and, and you were willing to be with at least five different men, what you represented was a threat to almost all of the marriages in that village. Esa mujer había tenido cinco maridos, entonces ella representaba una amenaza para todos los matrimonios de su aldea. If she went through five husbands, then she had likely five different families who thought very poorly of her, and I'm sure she was well known in the community as a threat and as a loose woman. Ella tenía cinco familias que la conocían muy bien, pero de una manera errónea. Y todos la veían simplemente como una mujer fácil y como una amenaza. So she is the type of person we're talking about. She continues to do uh, a thing in her life that she knows is unhealthy and wrong, but for whatever reason, she just continues in that pattern. Y ella estaba llevando una vida que no era saludable, que no estaba bien, pero ella seguía con ese mismo comportamiento. Again, we all know people who are in the same behavior patterns in some way, and we ourselves are often in that same behavior pattern. It doesn't have to be uh, sexualized or have to do with addictive substances. It can be any behavior pattern that we repeat over and over that is bad for us and bad for others. Y todos nosotros conocemos personas que están en este patrón de comportamiento, o nosotros mismos. No tiene que ser algo sexual, no tiene que ser drogas, pero hay otros comportamientos que los podemos repetir una y otra vez. The beautiful thing about Jesus is that he sees the person and he knows the sin, but he is different than all of us because he sees beyond the sin and understands why the person continues in that behavior. La cosa hermosa de esto es que Jesús ve los comportamientos, ve el pecado, pero Él ve más allá porque Él ve el porqué de ese comportamiento. We are blessed to live in a time when we can begin to unlock the same thing and understand 
why human beings so often act in self-destructive ways. Y nosotros vivimos en un tiempo donde podemos descubrir y ver por qué los seres humanos se comportan de maneras tan destructivas. In my life, I have been seeking in one way or another to understand why I could not control myself as well as I wanted to and, and why some things in my family of origin continued to happen over and over again. And, and it is only recently, in the last two years, that I have really come to understand in a way that allows me to heal. Hay cosas en mi persona que yo veo que las repito una y otra vez y también en mi familia. Pero desde hace dos años me estoy dando cuenta de cosas, de cómo yo puedo repetir esos patrones, pero ahora me puedo dar cuenta cómo sanar. I learned these things in two ways. The first was from the forgiveness challenge, taking uh, the act of forgiving people seriously and, and working out how it happens. And the second and probably more important one has been a program called Mending the Soul for people who have survived abuse or trauma and are trying to figure out a way to make peace. Y hay diferentes formas como yo me he dado cuenta de esos patrones destructivos. Una es a través del reto del perdón que hicimos hace dos años, pero la más importante ahora es un programa que se llama Enmendando tu Alma. I'm going to go through, through quickly a step-by-step -step process that explains how we get into toxic and, and unhealthy behaviors, and, and then we will talk a little bit uh, about how you might have the opportunity to find the healing that God has provided for me. Y voy a ir poco a poco describiendo cómo nosotros podemos introducirnos en patrones destructivos de comportamiento. So, so effectively, what happens is in a person's life, a trauma or abuse happens to them when they are too young uh, to understand it or to cope fully with it. Efectivamente, lo que pasa es que un trauma puede pasar cuando somos muy jóvenes o no podemos entender lo que ha pasado. That event or, or can be anything, but usually it's more than a momentary event. It's something that uh, plays out for a very long period of time. For example, if a child's parents divorce, that divorce happens in the court one day, but the disintegration of the relationship happens usually over a very long time. All of that is traumatizing to the child. Un ejemplo es el divorcio de los padres. El divorcio puede pasar en un tiempo, pero la destrucción de la relación pasa a través del tiempo. Y todos esos eventos van destruyendo la imagen de la persona. A quick list of things that can cause this uh, uh, result are physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional trauma, abandonment, cruelty, uh, um, y alguno de la qué puede pasar con esto pues puede ser que haya abandono que haya crueldad que haya negligencia que se deje a los hijos. When these things happen to, uh, to a person and they don't have the maturity or under life uh, maturity to handle it, what they do is they have to cope with the pain and, and with the uh, kind of roughed up feelings that it causes. Y cuando eso pasa, las personas tienen que buscar algo para poder sobrellevar el dolor o el trauma que han pasado. So what they want to do is they want to make the pain stop, but they can't control the situation. Again, in divorce or if your parent is an alcoholic or whatever the case is, if you're a child, you can't make the adults behave. So your only option is to find a way to feel better. Y hay algo, los niños, las personas, nosotros no podemos controlar como niños a los adultos o a otras personas. Entonces, vamos a desarrollar un mecanismo para sentirnos bien ante el dolor. There are many, many ways to do that. I'm going to read a list of common ones. So you can turn to drinking or drugging. 
you can turn to sex. That would be pornography, that would be having uh, multiple affairs, or, or simply having multiple marriages. You can turn to anger and get in lots of fights and name calling and, and throwing fits when you're unhappy. You can turn to gossip and slander and spend your life putting other people down to make yourself feel better. You can turn to playing video games or computer games or reading or even doing homework or going to the office and working compulsively all the time to the exclusion of your family. You can also bury yourself in television or other pursuits that seem harmless, but they really are just another type of drug. Cutting, uh, that's a phenomenon that's been around for a long time, but we talk about it more now. That's when a person cuts their flesh with a razor blade or, or a knife uh, in, in order to feel something different than what they've been feeling. You can dress badly and have very poor hygiene, or you can dress suggestively at much too young of an age and, and be flirtatious in a way that uh, is abnormal. You can have extreme shyness, even to the point of toxic isolation. You can be a hoarder. There are uh, literally a million behavior patterns that human beings develop and, and go to over and over and over again in order to escape the horrible feeling that the abuse or the trauma induced in them. Estos comportamientos pueden ser el beber, drogas, el sexo, pornografía, el tener aventuras, tener múltiples parejas, el tener um, arrebatos de rabia, pelear, el ponerle nombres a otras personas, el pelear, chismear, el calumniar, el poner a otros abajo constantemente, el estar jugando con videojuegos o con computadoras, juegos compulsivamente, leer o ver televisión compulsivamente, cortarse, es algo que ve, se oye más ahorita pero ha estado por mucho tiempo, el vestirse de, de una manera mal, con mala higiene y estar siempre coqueteando con otras personas, una extrema timidez que llega al punto de la aislarse tóxicamente, el acumular cosas y hay muchas maneras en que los seres humanos tratan de, de quitar ese dolor del horror del abuso. Most of the time, when we engage in these behaviors, we don't really understand that when we're in our 20s or 30s or 40s that we are still medicating against a trauma that happened when we were very young. And the reason for that is, is we tend to think that with time the trauma is gone and that's why it is a mystery to us. We ask ourselves, why would I keep behaving? Why can't I stop doing this? What, what is the matter with me? And we ask the same question of others. Part of the answer is because we don't remember that we're trying to medicate against that original trauma. It just becomes the way that we have learned to live. And it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, then the thing that made you feel better originally now makes you feel even worse. Y nosotros nos podemos preguntar, pero como todavía los 20 años, ya estoy joven o ya estoy más grande, sigo comportándome de la misma manera. Y es porque estoy medicando mi dolor. So when Jesus meets the woman at the well, he, he doesn't just see a, a woman who is wreaking havoc on her community by sleeping with lots of men. He knows, because he is the Messiah, what it was that hurt her in the first place that she has uh, turned her life in this negative way. Y nosotros vemos cómo Jesús pudo ver ese comportamiento en la mujer samaritana, pero él ve más allá porque él era el Mesías. Her reaction to him to, to go into town and to tell others, you have to come and see this man, as far as the scripture tells us, is based solely on this. He did not shame her. He told her that he knew what she had been doing and how she was living, but he saw beyond that and still treated her with respect and dignity. Y la mujer, después de la conversación con Jesús, fue a su pueblo y a todos les habló de él por una razón porque Jesús no la avergonzó, sino la trató con respeto. 
for her, I, I think that's probably the most powerful thing that ever happened. A and it is true for most Christians, too. Most of us are in church today because there is inside of us something that has been uh, deeply wounded. And we seek forgiveness for the ways that it, we have reacted to it, for the things that we've done in the negative. And, and we seek some peace and joy that moves beyond what we've always known. Y para ella, así como para nosotros, cuando tenemos ese encuentro con Jesús, vamos a un lugar de paz que sobrepasa todo entendimiento. So in a nutshell, here is what Christianity says. We say, given that that is the condition of human beings, that all of us become trapped and ensnared in things that we shouldn't be, that Jesus Christ has the power to do the most important thing to set us free. And that power is to forgive us even while he knows in full detail everything we have done. Y lo poderoso es que aunque Jesús sabe todas las cosas que nosotros hemos hecho, Jesús nos va a dar el poder de perdón y de liberarnos. Psychotherapy and counseling are beautiful things and they help but they cannot offer the prime thing that God has offered us through Jesus, which is for us to return to a state of innocence, knowing that our past is gone in God's view and, and we are relieved of the guilt of it. La psicoterapia y la consejería ayuda mucho, pero hay algo que no pueden hacer, y es que Jesús nos libera y nos lleva nuevamente al estado de inocencia, donde nosotros podemos empezar de nuevo. The reason that so many Christians attend church every week and do the things that Christians do but do not seem to heal, they continue to live in the old ways, in truth, in its simplest form, is because they don't believe that Jesus can or will actually forgive them. Y la verdad es de por qué muchos cristianos siguen viviendo una vida miserable. Es simplemente por una razón y es porque no creen que Jesús pueda perdonar. And that means that they are also not willing to forgive others. So if you hold your own guilt inside for the way you have coped with the pain in your life, that guilt spills over and you are unwilling to forgive other people. The Bible says you will be forgiven to the level that you uh, forgive, and that's true. They are uh, uh, equal in some ways. You must accept forgiveness in order to be able to give forgiveness. Most of us in our relationships end up at a place that's less than that. We don't feel forgiven and we don't forgive others, and so we continue to hurt each other and make things worse. Lo que nos detiene de seguir adelante es que nosotros cargamos la culpa porque pensamos que no hemos sido perdonados, pero después nosotros también traspasamos esa culpa a otros y seguimos con el mismo ciclo. So for today, uh, I want you to understand what you're seeing or what is happening in your own life when people and yourself engage in these behaviors over and over. And I want you to know that you cannot be fixed or helped in one easy prayer or one moment in time. Mm -mm. Like everything else in life that is good, you have to understand the process and then work the process. That process is the forgiveness challenge and the program called Mending the Soul. We'll be offering both of those together in the fall, in both Spanish and in English, and I want to invite you today, if this sermon speaks to you, to begin praying and asking God for the courage to go into those programs. Y yo quiero decirles que el principio de sanar no es con una oración rápida, sino es pasando a través de un proceso. Y yo les invito a través de primeramente el reto del perdón y después de enmendar nuestra alma. Y estos dos programas los vamos a tener durante el otoño para que lo, todos podamos pasar por este proceso. When I read the story of the woman at the well, I, I recognize immediately that I am like the woman at the well. 
having gone through these programs and, and seen how much it changed my internal life and how it is changing my relationships, I can't wait to tell other people, my God, you wouldn't believe the power that Christ has if you put yourself in these places and let his spirit minister to you. Cuando yo leí el pasaje de la mujer samaritana, yo me identifiqué y dije, yo soy como la mujer samaritana, pero he pasado por esos dos, eh, inventando tu alma y el reto del perdón y sigo adelante. In summary, the best thing that you can do for your relationship is to get your own heart and soul right with God because then those who are in relationship with you have a, a much more gracious person to relate to. Y la mejor cosa que usted puede hacer es darle su vida al Señor y de esa manera las personas que convivan con usted van a tener a una persona cerca de ellos con más gracia para ofrecer y para vivir. If you would bow your heads for a word of prayer. Father, we ask that you would bless those whose hearts are open today. Allow them the privilege of feeling your Holy Spirit within and surrounding them. For those who want to make the decision to move forward in their uh, faith of you, please bless that decision today. We lift up those who are uh, affected by COVID virus in many different ways. We ask that you would bless our church and our people that we might minister in this community in your son's name and spirit. And above all else, we give thanks and praise to you for knowing us, knowing everything about us, and loving us as deeply as you do. Amen. Amen. We're going to enjoy a second song by Alejandro. Antes de hablar, cantaste sobre mí. Ha sido tan bueno para mí. Antes de respirar, soplaste vida en mí. Ha sido tan bueno para mí. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. 
when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, your love. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leave the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No hay sombra que no alumbres, monte que no escales, para encontrarte a mí. No hay pared que no derrumbas, mentira que no rompas para encontrarte a mí. No, tu amor me envuelve, me sostiene, amor sin condición. Me persigue y deja las noventa y nueve y va por mí. No puedo ganarlo ni merecerlo, tu amor se entregó por mí. Oh, tu amor me envuelve, me sostiene, amor sin condición. Yeah. Oh. Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. So uh, for our uh, tithes and offerings, if you came expecting to uh, give this morning, we have uh, plates on the tables in front, and we also have the electronic giving uh, inside the church, and of course online also. Uh, anything else? As we enter that time of our service, if, if you would uh, lift your hearts to God and, and as uh, Alejandra sings our uh, third song, uh, let your heart truly be an offering to God. Así es de que, así como Alejandra va cantando y nosotros podemos pasar, que sea verdaderamente una ofrenda para el Señor. Mm Let the king 
shadow where I hide the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, and you are good, good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song and let the king of my heart be the fire inside my Thank you for coming. Muchas gracias por venir. We have a big blessing having worship here in the Vitalia Methodist Church all together. And let's pray a blessing before to be dismissal for today. I pray that the Lord will bless and protect you. And that he will show your mercy and kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace. Yo oro para que el Señor le bendiga y le proteja, para que le muestre su misericordia y su bondad. Que el Señor sea bueno con usted y le llene de su paz. Amén y amén. Dios les bendiga. God bless you.